Erin and for today's video we are going to be doing a species spotlight. So I decided it would be kind of cool to focus on specific species that you can find in the saltwater hobby and there are a ton of them so I figured hey we should do a species spotlight every now and then. And the one I decided to start off with is the starry blenny. Now you may be asking yourself why out of all fish would I start with a starry blenny and not something like a clownfish or a damsel or something people typically get when they first start their saltwater tank. Well the reason is is because my favorite fish that I've had is my starry blenny Orion. Now if you've watched my other videos on my other channel as well as the videos that I've had on here Orion is my hurricane survivor. So for those who don't know, here's the short story. Hurricane Florence came through, we had a generator, we had a plan, our generator broke. Long story short, tanks crashed and we thought that all my fish in my big tank had died. However, I came back from New York after the hurricane. So I came home and that tank had been sitting without any water or anything running about I want to say seven days, 10, yeah, it was about seven days at that point. Well, three days after I got home, I was sitting on the couch and I thought I had some movement coming out of my bare tank. And I was like, what the heck? What is in there? Right? Like I thought there was a bug or something in there that had gotten in there because I hadn't drained the tank all the way up. And I look and peeking out of a rock looking at me is my starry blenny looking at me like hey you're gonna feed me you're gonna get me out of here how about a heater a little bit of water movement can we do something here because this is not fun in here and i looked and my boyfriend was standing over in the other room and i just went oh my god he's still alive and my boyfriend was like what the hell are you talking about and i'm like my starry blenny he's still alive so yeah, I started blending Orion. I'll pop in some pictures and videos for of him throughout this whole video. Is my favorite, and that's why I decided to do the starry blenny for my first species spotlight. So starry blennies are a species of comb tooth blennies that come from the western central Pacific Ocean. Now some people also refer to them as snowflake blennies. And the reason why they are called starry or snowflake blennies is because of their coloring. They're like a deep brownish purplish color and they have mottled like spots of white on them. And they also have yellow on their pectoral fins as well as their tail. Now when I first had my starry blenny I didn't really notice the yellow on it but the more you look, the more I can see it. That being said, they're really good at changing color. There are a lot of fish species, I'm sure in freshwater too as well, but especially in saltwater where they can actually change their pigmentation, whether they're sleeping, they're stressed, etc., etc. So sometimes he can look darker than what he is, and sometimes he looks a lot lighter. For example, on his face, sometimes his little mask on his face is much whiter and brighter than it is at other times. I've found when he's more excited and he knows he's gonna eat, he has a lot more white on his face. And then when he's more scared and he's hiding in the rocks, he's definitely a lot darker. So that's something cool that saltwater fish have is that they can kind of change their colors as their mood sees fit or whatever's going on with them. Now, Starry Blenny is definitely not for a nano tank. So they should be kept in tanks that are at least 30 gallons or larger. And part of the reason for that is they do get to be pretty big fish. Their maximum size that they can get is about five and a half inches, which I mean, if you think about it, that's pretty darn big for a fish. And with Blennies, they don't look like your normal like clownfish or fish that's I don't know how to really explain it. They look a little bit more eel-like than they do a normal fish, if that makes sense. They have like an elongated body with a longer tail, but they're definitely very, very cute. My mom didn't seem to think that he was so cute in the beginning, but it's, he's kind of grown on her. 
Now, in addition to them being in a 30 gallon or larger tank, there should also be plenty of rock in whatever tank you have them in. And the reason for that is, is because they kind of, rather than free swimming like clownfish and such, they like to perch on rocks, much like gobies like to do. So they'll perch on rocks, they hide in the rocks. Like I said, when I found him after he had been sitting in that tank for so long, he literally had poked his head out of the, a hole in the rock that was like his favorite hole that was in the rock, like what's going on here? And he had had himself perched in that little hole. So they'll kind of bounce around from place to place. Sometimes he hangs out on my magnet cleaner. He really makes me nervous when he does this, but he'll also hang out on the magnets that my gyres are attached with. He's never really had an issue of getting like stuck to the guy or anything, so thank God for that, but he makes me nervous when he does that. Now, typically you should only have one Starry Blenny per a tank, unless you have a very large tank and the pair is actually a mated pair. Now, the reasoning behind this is because, like many other fish, you would think that they'd want a fishy friend. Well, no, they become aggressive over their territory and they can fight another blenny that looks like them or one that it's his own species. So for example, they do sell a fish that's just called a comb tooth blenny and I'll pop in a picture here so you can see what they look like. They have a very similar body shape, not the same color obviously, but in fishy land, if you look the same, you're probably not gonna be friends unless you're mates. So definitely best to keep one of them or one blenny that specifically looks like them in a tank unless you have a fairly large tank where they can kind of scope out their own territory. Now, my tank is only 68 gallons, so definitely would only have one Starry Blenny in there. I will say that initially, I had another perching fish, which was a diamond goby when I had first set up the tank, and I never had an issue with my Starry Blenny being mean to the goby at all. Some people say that their blennies can get a little bit sassy and let other tank members know, hey, this is my territory, but I've never really had that issue. So as I said, this is a hardy fish. I told you about my hurricane crash and how he survived. Well, I have seen other stories on different forums and such where people have had similar experiences, whether they've had ick come and wipe out most of the habit inhabitants of their tank and their blenny survived, or their tank crashed for whatever reason and all their other livestock died and their starry blenny lived. So if you're looking for a fairly hardy fish, I would definitely recommend the Starry Blenny. Now, according to what I've been reading, a Blenny's diet, especially a Starry Blenny's diet, should mainly consist of algae. And I have to tell you that that really hasn't been the case for my Starry Blenny. He'll eat algae. If you put nori in there, he'll eat it. Or he'll peck at any algae that's growing in the tank. But for the most part, He's just a pig and he'll eat whatever I put in there. I feed frozen food. I've fed rods frozen food as well as LRS. I prefer the LRS to the rods, which I know the LRS does actually have seaweed in it, but he's all about the meaty parts of the food more than the actual algae that's in there. So yes, you should definitely provide them with algae since that's what they're supposed to be eating. But since they're fairly hardy fish, feeding them regular food should not be an issue. So if you notice on the Starry Blenny, he has some cute little eyebrow things on the top of his head. And those are known, I'm probably not gonna say this right, as Siri, not like Siri that's on your phone, but C-I-R-R-I. -R -R -I. Now, I was kind of looking to see what the whole purpose of those were. And on some other fish, such as frogfish and stuff, it's used for feeding and there's some that have these like little appendages by their mouths. But then there's other fish where it's not really known what they're for. So I guess they don't really know what they're for. They're certainly not for feeding on him because they're on the top of his head and it's not like an angler where it dangles in front of his mouth and then he eats it because obviously they're supposed to be herbivores anyway. So I'm not sure why they're there, but they definitely make him cute, which comes to my last and final part about why you should get a Starry Blenny. So that brings me to my last point about why you should get a Starry Blenny. The reason is their personality. Now, I know many people have had clownfish and if you watch Finding Nemo, they're like, hey, clownfish aren't really funny. Well, they're not, they're mean, they're nasty, most of them. However, my Starry Blenny, he, has such a personality 
and I know other people who have had bunnies that they equally have a personality. I honestly call him my little puppy dog in the tank because he literally, I know it sounds crazy, but he gets happy when he sees me. And that's probably because he knows when I'm near the tank, I'm going to feed them. So I'd be happy too. But he seriously will follow me from one end of the tank to the other. Even if I don't have food, he does. Now don't get me wrong, he still has his skittish moments. If he made quick movements, he hides. Typically, like if I have my phone or my camera near the tank, he won't come near it because he's scared of them. Cause I mean, he's a little dude. Can you imagine having a big old camera or a phone like stuck up in your face? He doesn't enjoy it. But other than that, personality plus with him, super cool fish definitely is more active in the tank and like I said he interacts with you so that's what I love about him pretty much he's just an awesome fish that's all the info I have on the starry blenny what do you guys think of them if you have one and like I said I'm gonna be making this species spotlight thing like a thing that I'm gonna do on this channel so if you have any recommendations for saltwater species, whether it be coral, fish, inverts, whatever, let me know down in the comments below what you'd like to learn about. So if you liked this video about the Starry Blenny, go ahead and give me a big old thumbs up. If you want to see more videos like this one on my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also click on that little bell that gives you the notification so you'll be the first one to see my videos when I post them. Alright guys, I will see you in my next one. Bye!